Welcome back team, it is your biggest fan, The Real Casadero, and in this session, we're gonna be building a full web page. Well, not a full web page, we'll be, I'll show you. Let's get into it, team. All right, team, so what I have behind me here is the Supreme New York website. So as you can see, they have Supreme in the background, of a full page background image. Down here, they have a clock. It's kind of hard to see. I'm gonna hit control and zoom and scroll up to zoom in clock right here links when we roll over the links they turn red then we got our social media icons now here and that's pretty much it team but what we're gonna do is we're gonna build this and it's gonna be our own so by the end of this video you will be able to build your own website you will have an understanding of HTML CSS JavaScript uh, positioning things on a web page all that stuff so let's roll team all right, team, if you would like to follow along, you're going to need a few tools. One of those tools is PowerShell Core. PowerShell Core operates on Windows, Linux, Mac, and then a bunch of other operating systems. All you have to do is head over to github.com forward slash PowerShell forward slash PowerShell, and that will take you to the PowerShell GitHub page where you can scroll down and read these instructions, and they will tell you how to download and install PowerShell on your system team again that website is github.com forward slash powershell forward slash powershell team every web developer needs a tool this tool is visual studio code this code editor will enable you to build just about anything you want to build now it's not going to do all the work for you but it will give you tools and features that make it a little easier and as you follow this tutorial today you're going to learn what some of those features are like multiple cursors the ability to add multiple lines the ability to navigate very easy with the keyboard there's plugins for live servers there's plugins for ways to see your code there's plugins for all kinds of stuff team if you would like to follow along here today what you're going to want to do is go grab yourself a copy of visual studio code and you can find that over at code visualstudio.com and you just click the button select your operating system download install and you're on your way team team every developer needs to keep track of their software track of what they're writing track of the versions what git does is it enables you to do that and if you would like to follow along with this tutorial head over to git-scm.com where you can download your very own version of git and get that installed on your system so you can follow along here right here there's a fantastic user manual it's pretty big team and I don't recommend that you go off and try to become a git expert right now but as you progress depending on how much code you want to write and what you want to do git is gonna be a very valuable tool and you can learn about it today in this tutorial team so grab yourself a copy of git all right, team, now that we have all that stuff out of the way, we can get started. So we're on our desktop. I'm going to hit the Windows key, and I'm going to type in PWSH and open up PowerShell Core. Now, I have some commands in here that you guys are probably not familiar with, and they won't be pre-installed on your system. And the reason for that is, is because we can have custom commands in PowerShell. I've made a few videos on my channel that show you the basics of programming, the basics of using PowerShell just go back and check those out team or you can check out the code 365 startup lab team and over at the code 365 startup lab there are free courses that will introduce you to web development the tool kit this is where I talk about Git, visual studio code stuff like that the HTML primer the visual studio code primer the PowerShell primer all these things are designed to introduce you to the tools that you need to build just about any website or web application that you want team so team what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna create a project folder for us to work out of so we're gonna do mkdir and this folder is gonna be called the superior IOR the superior project we're going to hit enter and then I'm just going to double click this and right click and we're going to do a CD and we'll right click again and we'll end up inside of that directory. I'll do a DIR. Now we're going to make the files that we need. So we're going to do an MKDIR. Now usually I have a script to do this, but I want to show you guys how to do this from the ground up so you understand everything. 
So we're going to do a MKDIR. We're going to make a CSS directory. This is going to house our styling for our program. We're going to make a JS folder and we're going to make a image folder. We'll also make a docs folder. So the docs folder is going to hold any documentation associated with the application that we build. The image folder will hold all of our images. The JavaScript folder will hold all of our code for our JavaScript, all of our logic. CSS is going to hang on to all of our styling, how our page is going to look, how it's going to be presented. And then that is it for our folder structure. We're going to put a semicolon and now we're going to start a new command. That command is going to be new dash item and we are going to use new item to make the files that we're going to be using in our application. The first file we're going to need, probably the most important, is the index.html. We are also going to need, and notice I'm putting commas in between these. This just tells PowerShell, hey, we are we are going to be making multiple things. And then I use the semicolon right here in order to tell PowerShell, hey, team, we are going to be starting a brand new command. And if you see me turning away like I'm like I'm crazy or something, team, it is because I'm trying to keep from breathing in the microphone and, uh, and, and just making the audio sound not good. All right, team, so driving right along, we're going to make our index-html, and then we're going to make a css dash. and actually, we're just going to put c. Here's the deal. We need to make these other files inside of these other folders, but these folders don't exist yet, so if we try to make them there, we'll get, we'll get an error. So what we're going to do is we'll just make our folders right now, so we'll go back. So we'll make all of this stuff right here. Now we've got our core folders. And we have our we got our core folders here and we have our core index.html right here team so what we're going to do now is we can create those other files we're going to create a main.js and a main.css so we'll go new dash item and now when we do css we can hit tab and it'll show us that directory and then inside of that directory we can just put main.css We'll hit enter and do that. We'll hit up and what we'll do is we'll go back and we'll make this CSS a JS. And this is so we can make a main.js inside of our JS folder. So we'll do JS, enter. Now we have our main.js in there. And everything, now you can't see all of these folders. So what we can do is if we type clear and we do a DIR and we do a forward slash recurse, this will show us everything that's in this directory and everything that's inside of the directories inside of this directory so we'll go through this real quick team so this is the directory that our project is in the superior project and inside of that directory we have three folders three directories css docs img and js then we have our index.html if we go down here superior project in our css folder which is right here we have main.css and in our JS folder, which is right here, we have our main.js team. Since we got all that stuff typed team, I just did a clear and got rid of everything. The next thing we're gonna to wanna to do is initialize a Git repository. We'll do a DIR. We have all of the files and folders we need to get started. And even if we don't, we can add more later on. But this is the baseline setup that we are going to need in order to go out and build our application. So right now what we're gonna do is team we're going to initialize a git repo so just follow along with me here and this will make sense as we go so we're going to do a git space init and it's going to tell us initialize empty git repository and what we're going to do is we're going to use this git repository to track all of our code as we write it and we will be able to walk back and forth through the different features that we have implemented and keep track of everything that we have done while writing our program so once we have initialized everything we can do a git status and this is going to show us hey this is what you have that we aren't tracking now the reason why git isn't tracking everything is because not everything contains something we have our main file which is index.html which git is going to track but then we have these folders that don't have anything in them like our doc and our images so to get these are pretty much non-existent there's no reason to keep an eye on these but we do have our css and our js which we see down here and that is because inside of css we have main.css cs and inside of our js folder we have our main.js so team what we're going to do now is we're going to add all of these files to what is called a staging area now i'm not going to be super precise in my language in this i would like to be but it would take 
forever in order to to get everything absolutely positively correct. The goal here is to show you how to build your own websites and web applications so you can go out and you can build things for fun and profit. So team, let's add these files. So we are going to do a git add dot and this is going to add all files and there's another command we can use it's called dash dash a l l and so again we're just adding all the files to our staging area and we can do a enter and now if we do a git uh i, for, I forget these commands sometimes even while i'm talking about them if we do a git status we can see that now all of those files have been added so what we can do is like say for instance working on something and we want to add something we can add that but we don't have to add everything team all right just to just to let and you'll see how this all goes so right now we've added all of our files in our project to the staging area that all the files that we want to track now we're going to commit these files so we're going to do a git commit dash m and then we're going to type a message and we're going to call this the initial commit and now we have made our initial commit if we do a git status it's going to tell us that our working our working tree is clean so what this means is this means that all of this code everything that we've typed so far has been preserved and we can go back and we can access it anytime we want and from here we can build on top of that foundation if we get something wrong then we can just go back to a previous version team now we're going to check out another branch so if we do a git branch we can see that we are on the master branch so what we're going to do is we'll create another branch for each different iteration of of software that we want to create team so right now we're going to run the command git checkout and we're going to do a dash b that means hey we're going to create a new branch if this branch doesn't exist and we're going to name this branch we'll put it inside of double quotes we can put it inside of single quotes as well but we're going to name this branch a zero zero dash initial html and then we will hit enter and we'll save that and now we're on this new branch if we do a git branch boom right so we see we're on the initial html branch so now whatever code we write is going to be on this branch and i'm going to show you guys a cool trick to go along with this team so what we're going to do right now is we're going to open up visual studio code and to do that so we just do a dir we're inside of our project directory where all of our files are and we want to open this project directory in visual studio code so we're going to type code dot and we'll hit enter and now we're inside of Visual Studio Code. And inside of Visual Studio Code, we're just going to click here in this welcome screen. We're going to hit Control W to close that out. And now we can see all of our directories. And inside of those directories, we have the files that we created. And we also have our index.html. So what we're going to do now, team, is we hit the Windows key. Actually, we won't hit the Windows key. We'll hold the Windows key and we'll hit left and we'll move that window to the left. And now it asks us, hey, what window do you want to put? over to the right we're going to say we just want to put this one over to the right for now but what we're really going to do team is we are going to open this index.html by clicking there and down here at the bottom i have this button that says go live now i'm going to switch my screen real quick so you guys can see more of the actual desktop and we will do that let's see there we go all right team so now you can see more of the desktop we're going to hit control b to close out this sidebar so we'll click inside of visual studio code control b to close that sidebar and now down here you see this go live if you click on these boxes right here click on those open those up and type in live server you're going to get a piece of software that pops up here at the top this is an extension that will give us the ability to run a live web server on our local machine so we can view our website as we make changes to a team so just click on live server go over here and install that and once it's installed you should have this icon at the bottom so i'm gonna hit Control w to close that out and we're going to go back up and click on these two pages to bring back our files we'll go into our index.html and then we'll start up live server team now when we start this up i'm going to hit the windows key and i'm going to hit left to bring this off to the left side of the screen so now when we hit alt tab we can tab through our three windows team and if there's more windows here but we're only working with these uh, three so we'll be able to tab back and forth and do what we have to do team 
But now that we're in here, what we're going to do is we're going to go into our browser. We're going to click this plus sign and we're going to type in Supreme New York. And what we're going to do is we're going to be going back and forth and we're going to have different tabs. So we'll have our main page and we'll have other tabs up here that we can use and reference when we got to find stuff out on the Internet and, and whatever else we have to do, team. So what we're doing now is we're just looking over the page structure, right? And I can see right here we have this logo, then we got a clock, and we have this navigation with all these links, and then we have our social media links. And this right here is giving me a little bit of an indication of how I want to lay out the web page and what kind of HTML I'm going to want to use, team. So what we're going to do now, team, is we're going to hit Control B. Well, we're going to go to Visual Studio Code, hit Control B to close out that sidebar. And we're just going to style this up in some HTML really quick. So in Visual Studio Code, if we hit Shift exclamation point and we make sure our language, if you go down here to the bottom and make sure our language is set to HTML. And to get to that menu even quicker, you can hit Control plus K at the same time and then hit M. And this will bring up a menu and you can just type in the language that you want to use, team. And I'm going to show you a bunch of more tricks in Visual Studio Code as we go along. So you enter the exclamation point and then you see this one, it says emit abbreviation. And down here you see this three, it says emit abbreviation. If we hit tab there, it just gives us a regular old doc type and then we can go and type all the rest of the stuff we need. Or we can hit control shift K, delete this line, hit shift exclamation point to bring that back. And on this one exclamation point, if we hit tab, it will give us a template of a HTML document. And I'll go through this real quick team. So right up here in doc type. So what we can do now inside of Visual Studio Code is we can type an exclamation point. And with one exclamation point, if we click that, it'll give us a full page template. And if we go back, we'll do a control, we'll do a control shift A, I mean a control alt A, ah geez, control A to select everything, backspace, and we'll, then we'll do a shift exclamation point. And if we select these three, it just gives us the doc type. Now sometimes all we need is the doc type. We don't need the other stuff, but in this case, we need everything team so we'll hit control i mean we'll hit shift exclamation point and hit tab and now this will give us our our base html layout and i'm just going to go through these right now and tell you what every tell you what everything means team here at the very top we have the doc type and we're just telling the web browser whatever program is going to be reading this web page we're telling them hey this is a html document so you're going to parse it as a html html document so that piece of software is going to be looking for particular tags now if we go down here we got an html tag and we're saying hey we're using HTML and the language that we're going to be using is going to be set to English so this tells the browser hey we're using English characters when we get down here into head, this whole head section tells the web browser or whatever software is looking at this document. It tells it what this document is all about. And inside of the head section, we have right here our meta char set. This just says we're going to use the character encoding of UTF-8, which gives us access to all of the characters for all of the, the human languages, plus all of the emojis and some other stuff. When we get down here into meta name, viewport and then content with device what we're saying is we're telling the web browser hey when somebody open or or any other kind of software because we can make user interfaces for other programs using uh hypertext markup language so when we get down here and it says the viewport is is saying whatever device is looking at this code we want you to set the viewport and that's the the place where people can see we want you to set it to a width of 100 percent and we want you to set the well we want you to set we want you to set the width to the width of the the device and we want you to set the initial scale to 1 so basically all all is saying is saying hey the screen size is going to be whatever the width of the device is and if it's a browser then the screen size is going to be whatever we set the width of the browser to and then we're saying make everything on this page a 1 to 1 scale based on these initial settings and this is going to make our page responsive so as you can see like when we go and we double click supreme well when we click the supreme website when we resize this like the background changes things move around this is a dynamic website so it's going to scale up and down 
from desktop to mobile. Now, it's not like other sites like you see, like when you go to Amazon or something like that, because it doesn't have a lot of content on it. But once we understand the core concepts of all of this stuff, you can build anything. So you can go from building something that looks like this to building something that looks like Amazon.com. And Amazon.com uses the same setup to scale. Now, it doesn't scale all the way down, but you can see the page makes changes as we move around. Now, it's a huge site. And it has a lot of different things going on. But don't get wrapped up in that stuff. What I'm going to show you is I'm going to show you the foundations, the fundamentals team. So let's roll. So we're going to go back to our page that's being served up from the server. And we're just going to go over here. And if you look up at the top, you can barely see it on my screen. But on your screen, if you're following along, if you look up at the top, you're going to see this IP address, 127001 index.html. This right here is the tab area. And the browser, when it reads in a web page, all browsers do the exact same thing. They look for the title of the document and they're looking in the metadata. They're looking in the information section of the document that tells what the document is about. And so they go in here and they find the title and then that title they will put up here. So if we save this, right, we can't, it, it, it hasn't changed yet because we just have document. But if we do this, if we say something like, um, superior superior save and we go over here and we refresh our page at the top we have superior because we have just told the browser like hey the title of this document is going to be this now inside of here we can also add some more information team and that information is called metadata and this metadata is used by search engines in order to index websites so if we hold the windows key and hit up a couple times we'll make visual studio code full page and what we're going to do is we're going to add some metadata up in here just to give you guys a super quick introduction to the kind of stuff that needs to be on a web page that's actually going to get it found on the internet there's a lot of courses and tutorials that teach us how to build websites and stuff but they don't show us some of the fundamentals and, and, and a lot of them don't even explain what this stuff is so let's 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 do this team so what we're going to do is we're just going to put our cursor on this line right here we're going to hold down alt and shift and we're going to hit down two times and over here where it says viewport we're going to change this to keywords and then we're just going to select everything inside of these uh, quotation marks and we're just going to delete that and over here we're going to put a description and we'll go back and get rid of this space and we'll get rid of this one right here so we got a description and over here is where we will put our description and we're just going to put learn to build websites and applications using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And then up here for our keywords, we would use whatever keywords, right? So we got HTML, CSS, control C. We'll paste these up here. And we got to separate them with a comma. So we'll just put a, we'll put a comma here, back, and we'll go to the end of CSS, and we will put a comma there, and then we'll grab JavaScript, C. And we'll paste this here, V, and then we're looking for keywords. So uh, learn to build. So we're going to say learn to build websites, control C, control V, and we'll put learn to build applications as well. So we'll put a comma and, a, and we'll paste that again and we'll go here and we'll put applications and let's see what else we got using HTML and we could, so we could say learn HTML, learn HTML, learn CSS, learn JavaScript, and so on and so forth. So you guys get the point, right? So we're just putting we're just putting keywords in here, and these keywords are related to what our web page is actually going to be about, team. What we're going to do now is we're going to add some HTML so you can see uh, how this thing is going to start out. So what we're going to do is we'll just control S to save this. We're going to hit the Windows key and hit the uh, the left arrow. Actually, I think I hit the F11 key and made this full screen by mistake. So if you ever want to go completely full screen, get rid of all the bars and completely focus on your code, just hit F11. And that will make everything go away and it's just you and your code editor. I'm going to hit F11. I'm going to hit the hold the windows key and hit left to bring that off to the left side. And now we have our web page over here. 
that's being run off of our live server. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this Supreme right here. We're going to drag this down and we're just going to hold the Windows key and hit and hit left. And then we're going to hit down and this is going to move this down. And now we got our page and we're going to hit left again until it comes back over here. And then we're just going to hit up. And so now we have everything laid out so we can see our web page as it updates and we can also see uh, the our our example now typically instead of having like another web page down here we'd have a mock-up that we created in like Photoshop or some other application but because we're doing this right here this way right now we don't need that we're just gonna go by this right here so hop back over to Visual Studio code and put your cursor right down here in this body section and this is where we're going to start to write our html so i'm going to scroll up here and i'm just going to walk down this page and i'm going to put this in html format in just a way that i can understand right right now team so the very first thing we got is we got we got supreme and so for me this would be the h1 of the website so we're going to type superior rior and then underneath that we're going to put an h2 so we'll hit control enter actually yeah so control control enter to go down to the next line and we're going to put a h2 and inside of there we're going to put this date format that they have so they have one zero dash one zero dash zero two dash two zero one nine and we've got the time format zero four forty one we need a semicolon I will uh, we need an actual colon there and then we'll put PM and they have NYC what we're gonna put is we're gonna put PNW for Pacific Northwest team so now we've got these two elements we'll go down another line and we are gonna put in a we're gonna put in all of this news and stuff so we're gonna create an unordered list and we'll hit tab and then we're gonna create a list item and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a list item for each of these so we will go inside of this we're gonna type news and then we'll if we hit shift and alt and go down we'll duplicate this line and we can just hold shift in the left arrow to go back to the beginning of there and now we can type the next thing so we'll type fall dash and we'll make this lowercase fall dash winter 2019 preview and then again we'll do alt shift and go down and now we can change this preview to look book look book bam and then we can go back up here and grab this news and we'll go hold control shift and hit down and now just hold the I mean not the alt not the control shift but the alt shift and hit down to duplicate it now take your finger off of shift and just hold alt and you can move this all the way to the bottom and now we can do the same thing we can go back here and we can change news to shop and we can duplicate that and go back and we can change shop to random then we got about stores about stores contact and we've got mailing list, M-A-I-L-I-N-G, mailing list. All right, so we've got all of those, and now we need our social media. So we are gonna, we're gonna add another UL. So we'll go UL tab, and inside of there we'll go LI, and they have uh, a Facebook LI, so they got Facebook, and we'll just shift and select these, and if we hold shift and alt and go down we can duplicate that and then we'll go here and we'll change this facebook to instagram and we'll do the same thing again and we'll change this instagram to uh, i think that's the app store so we'll go we'll go app store app store we'll save and now we've got our basic structure up here so you see we have our just like these guys over here we have our name we've got our clock we've got all of our 
navigation deals here and then down here we have our social media and this is what the basic HTML of this page is and if we go back and we investigate this HTML just a little bit what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit control a and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna go format document in order to just line everything up and we will take this over here and we're just gonna scale it down a little bit and we will bring so we'll drag that ah come on let's see all right there we go and so now we can see more of our more of our code so what we did is we used some basic HTML structures. Now we're going to make this page a little more complicated going forward, but I just want to give you a basic layout so you can understand how things are going here, right? So the body is the body of our entire page. And so everything that goes in the body is going to be what the user sees, unless we explicitly say we don't want them to see something and everything is going to be laid out on the page in the order that we type it, but we can explicitly position this stuff anywhere on the page that we want we can move things all around it doesn't it doesn't matter what we say in the code does not matter we can completely manipulate everything we can move news to the bottom we can move mailing list to the top we can put this ul above this ul we can put the, the heading at the bottom we can do whatever it is we want team and so that's one of the hard things for people to wrap their heads around when they're going out and they're learning this stuff so inside of our body we have some tags and right we're using the h1 and the h2 and these go all the way to h6 and what h1 means this means the most important thing on the page without going too deep into this right now what we want to have here in our h1 tag is not necessarily the 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 title of the page or the title of our business or the title of whatever we want to have what that page is about now when we typically when developers and designers are, are creating this stuff they're writing HTML they're thinking about the logical elements how this is gonna look on the screen so we know the default styling that the browser applies gives these things certain priorities so the h1 is the biggest h2 is gonna be the second biggest and then we have our list items which have these bullets next to them so the browser is giving it this basic styling and because this is the, the most basic styling in the standard for, for laying out HTML documents and now there's a bunch of more elements that we can use for all different kinds of stuff. But just to, to give you like an overview of it, using these, these main elements, brow I mean not browsers, but developers and designers, they think logically like this they go okay the h1 that's going to be like whatever we want to be the most dominant on the page and then the h2 will be the second thing when really that's good in order for the way the page is going to look to, to people viewing the page but it's bad for search engines because the search engine while we have up here in our keywords in our metadata we say html css javascript we have all this stuff and then you get down here and you have this word that's completely unrelated to any of this stuff up here so a computer doesn't know what any of this stuff means the computer has no idea what superior is it doesn't know why there's a clock here it doesn't know what this list means it doesn't know any of this stuff and none of this stuff references anything related to anything in our keywords or our content and so when people talk about SEO they they they're typically talking about they're talking about this kind of stuff right like putting on our web page things that are related to what the page is supposed to be about but at the same time we don't create layouts like that or like we don't think through this process when we're, just, when we're designing stuff so we what we end up with is we end up with a bunch of really nice websites on the internet that nobody ever finds because the search engines don't show them to them because the search engines don't know how to properly categorize these things so like in this case like if we just if we give it like a critique of the superior web of the supreme website the question would be it do they want traffic do they want people who do not know what the brand is to be able to find them and if so then how can they build this web page in a way that people because people they aren't going to go online and just be like supreme like when they think about clothes they're going to go to google and they're like i want to buy some pants or a shirt or a hat or what's the like the best luxury brand or whatever they're going to be looking for stuff like that in the search engines that's what they're going to be indexing based on and so when people do those searches they'll find them but based on what we have here when people do a search they'll never find this page in relation to to code right well for me it's code but for these guys for superior is code but for supreme is clothing so nobody's ever going to find them 
based on that thing unless their keywords match and then the, the rest of the website sort of falls in line and then they build authority through link clicks and stuff like that so anyway team that is a, that is a bit ways ways off but just to give you an overview if you want to know more about html and how to build not only web pages that look good but also how to build web pages that that get found in search you're going to want to check out the code 365 startup lab team here at the code 365 startup lab there are free courses that will introduce you to web development the tools you need in the basic languages we don't have javascript here yet but javascript is coming and also if you want to support the channel and you want to go deeper into any of these topics i would register for the code 365 startup lab inside of here there's already a bunch of content but we're going deep on html css and javascript i'm uploading new videos on a regular basis team and all of the stuff here is designed not to teach you a particular technology per se but how to think through the processes and use the knowledge uh, the deep knowledge of the very basics of web development and application design and building in order to be able to go out and build your very own stuff. And right now for a limited time team, you can get a lifetime membership for $99 a lifetime membership. This is access to everything that you see here already, plus some more stuff and we got more courses coming down the pipe and i'm going to be uploading tons of information more examples more more tutorials on building particular websites building particular uh different types of applications uh i'm going to be uploading templates resume templates all different kinds of things team so if you want to be one of the first people to support the code 365 startup lab go over here sign up for a membership team and if you just want to check it out you're not too sure about the 99 dollars for life then you can sign up for the 20 dollar a month plan and just check out everything and then if you don't like it you can cancel it and if you do then you can upgrade to the 99 before the price goes up team so what we're going to do now is, is since we have our basic, basic structure team, we're going to go back over into PowerShell, wherever, where, where did you go? And we got PowerShell right here and we are going to do a Git. and actually let's clear the screen to make this look decent. And I apologize because my, uh, this name thing up here is in the way. So let's move that out of the way real quick. All right, team. So hopefully you can see right up there at the top of the screen. And actually, I'll just drag this down a little bit. And what we're going to do is we're going to do a get status. All right, let's try this one more time. We're going to type clear. Boom. And we're going to do get status. All right. So we've modified our, our index.html and it's telling us that. And if we do a get diff, it'll show us the changes so if we hit space we can see everything in green is everything that we have changed so we've added all this stuff and the only thing we've deleted is this one space right here so this is all new content that's what this is telling us so if we hit q we can get out of there we'll type clear and we can do a get add all we'll add everything and now everything's added if we do a get status we see that modified has turned green. Now we can do a git commit dash M and the message is going to be uh, wrote the initial HTML code and we'll hit enter. And now that has been committed. Now this is where git gets cool. Let's say for instance, we've done all of this basic stuff but we want to go back and we want to try and lay this out in a different way but we want to keep all this same uh styling we could go back to master so we could do a git checkout master and we go back to the master branch and our page over here disappears and that is because inside of our original html there is no there is no um there's no code like this code doesn't exist so we'll do a git checkout actually we do git branched so we can see the branches and then we'll go here we'll select zero zero initial we'll copy that by right clicking and then we'll do a git checkout 
and we'll paste that back and we'll hit enter and let's see switch to branch 00 initial HTML if we go over here and we hit refresh then all this stuff comes back now what I want to do is I'm gonna save this and if we go back and we do a get status now it's gonna see it's gonna say that that file has been modified so what we can do is uh, let's say we let's say we change something in here but we don't know we can do a git reset dash dash hard and it's gonna go back to before we made that change and so now we can see it's back before we made that change but that was the only change we made was we repositioned everything on the web page so if we go back over here we can do a git status and it's gonna say that everything is clean so what we're gonna do is we're gonna select all of this again we're gonna right click and we're going to go format document now everything's laid out nice and neat we'll save that we'll go back over here and if we go up a couple times and check out get status we can see that a change was made we can do a git diff to see what that change was and we'll do space and we can see all these different changes the red is everything that changed and as we know we just moved some stuff around we didn't delete anything all right so we'll quit to get out of here and we'll do a git add dash dash all actually we'll do a git add dot and then we'll do a semicolon and we'll do a git commit dash m and we'll say uh format it the html so it can be read easier so we'll hit enter and that's been committed and now when we do a git checkout if we do git checkout master everything goes back to the way it was before all right so there's no code here we didn't type anything out and we can start from scratch all over again or which is what we're going to do in this case we'll do a git branch to see our branches we're going to select this one right here again and actually we can just scroll up and let me make this window a little bigger we'll we'll clear we'll clear all this out clear and then we'll do a h and we can see the history of all the commands that we've run before so we've done this git add all we've done this git checkout before so look git checkout uh zero zero initial so that's 44 we can type r which means run 44 so we're going to run number 44 from the history and we go and we switch over to that branch and like here is telling us something in line char one uh i think it's just we we gave it a switch so if we do a git branch so we 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 added something in that command that powershell didn't understand the branch all right so now we're on this initial html branch and we can go from here and if we go over here refresh our page all of our content comes back now we can use this as a baseline to go to the next level of our project so the next level is going to be a git checkout dash b and this one is going to be zero one and is going to be our initial styling s-t-y-l-i-n-g And now we're on this initial styling branch and on this initial styling branch we are going to begin to go and style our code to match the this layout right here team now before we go down that road i want to take a closer look at this html because there are some things we can do that are going to help us out in the future we can take we can use some other html tags to group this html in ways that will make sense and make it easier for us to code later on so let's get started team so the very first thing we're going to do is we want to be able to style this entire page so we're going to make a wrapper so we're going to do a dot wr actually is going to be a hashtag w-r-a-p-p-e-r -P -P -E we're going to put a tag tab to complete that and now we have a div with the idea wrapper and inside of this wrapper we're going to put all of our html so if we go down here and we grab everything after that div all the way to the end of our page just before the body and control x and go back up here we can paste this all inside of this wrapper div so now we can style this wrapper 
and everything else is going to be inside of there. Now inside of our wrapper div, I'm going to add another container and that container is going to be our content container. So we're going to go uh, ID content container. So we'll do dash container tab and then we'll hit enter and inside of our content container we're going to put all of our content so everything underneath here again all the way down to this ul we're going to cut control x and we'll go back up here and we'll just paste that right there so now we've got we've got these two containers so we've got a wrapper which is going to be the whole page and then we've got this content container which we're going to use just to to sort of group and wrangle and style this content that's inside of there and now we're now that we're in here we're going to further group this content some more so what we'll do is we'll go down here and we'll make a div and we'll call this the the um the header section so we'll go dot actually we'll go asterisk header and then we'll hit tab and we'll hit enter and we'll go down and we'll shift select these two and if we hold alt we can move these up and go down control shift k to delete this line and now we have this header and down here this first you this first ul is going to be a nav element because it's navigation so we're just going to say nav and inside of there we're going to put this first ul and what we're going to do is because we're going to have multiple navs, we're going to have another nav down here. So we'll enter here. We'll put nav and put a tab and then we'll hit enter and we'll grab this UL and we'll put it inside of this nav here. And because we're going to have multiple navs, we can give these both a class of nav. So we're going to grab this one and we're going to hold the alt key and we're going to put our cursor inside of this nav. And now we'll put a space and we'll go class and we'll give it a class of main nav main dash nav because this is going to be our main navigation now what we can do is if we hit escape we'll go back to one cursor we'll copy this class control c and go down here to our our other class well actually we don't have to copy it so we've got main nav so we've got one main nav here and this is going to be our secondary nav so we'll give this a class of secondary nav and this is just so we can style these later on so we've got main nav and secondary nav but all, we're also going to give these both a class of nav so now we can style both navs at the same time with whatever styling is going to be the same between the two and we can style them individually by using either their uh, by using their individual class names now these could also be IDs too so we could have an ID of secondary nav and an ID of main nav and that might make it easier for us to lay this out uh, or think about it in our head so we're gonna cut this one out so we'll control X and we'll go over here and we'll just put ID and we'll paste that right in there and then the same thing we'll do this here we'll cut this control X and we'll go back and then we can do a control V. We'll actually do, 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 do. Let's see, nav uh, ID tab, and then we can paste that in here. Now the deal is with classes, classes you can have multiple classes, but IDs you can only have a single ID. So we can't have multiple IDs in here, but we can have multiple classes. So say for instance, we wanted, we wanted to style these exactly the same, but we wanted to target them individually we would use that other method where we had the main nav class and we had the secondary nav class now if we're going to have a, a id with that name we don't want to have we can have a class with that same name but we don't want to have a class with that same name team because we will begin to confuse ourselves so the best way to think about it is if i want to control the look and feel of multiple things then i give it a class and i can call 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 it by that class name and then I can control all these things or I can give um, a, an individual ID where I can call them just by their ID so when we call main nav we're just talking to the main nav nothing nothing else out there we can we can touch and what what this does is it makes it easier because we can target individual items right normally we could just target the HTML but maybe we don't have maybe there's no tag to, to signify 
uh, what exactly it is we're doing. And so, or, or we want to want to make our code uh, useful in some other application or some other form somewhere, then we can add the, this additional information in the form of classes. All right, team. And this also lends itself to ways we can do this stuff kind of programmatically too. So like, let's say for instance, we have this class down here and we got it set to nav. And what if we gave it a class of social media? And then we wrote some code that said, hey, whenever an element that is a nav has a class of social media, we're gonna look in the LIs and we're gonna read this text and whatever this text says, we're gonna replace it with the icon. So then we can build this whole library or this whole framework to build applications like this. So we could literally go in and have all of this stuff set and we can say, hey, right, when whenever an element contains, whenever an element contains some particular information, then we're going to do a particular kind of thing. So we could build a program that literally says, hey, like when we write some code that has nav and we put these LIs and we put, you know, whatever in here, when that code comes out, these are not going to be text. They're going to be icons. Or, or like this up here, it won't be the word news. It may actually put in like the, the first page top news story from CNN or something like that. So that's how you can begin to think about this stuff in sort of a, a programmatic way. Now, if we have LIs and they're all LIs, if we target an LI to do this, then this would happen with all of these pieces. So how can we break this down so we can control individual parts? So we're starting with the nav and then inside of the nav, We've got this main nav, so now we can target that, and then we can target main nav UL or main nav LI or main nav LI that contains, you know, fall, winter, to 2019 or whatever. So that's a way to think about code team. So now I believe we have our basic structure here. What we're going to do is we're going to control S, and then we are going to go back and we're going to do another git commit, and we're going to call this, we're going to do a git add all. And I'm just looking. For, all right, so we'll do a git add all. We'll add a semicolon, and then we'll do a git commit, and we'll say added additional structure to the HTML. HTML to make it easier to style. We'll enter that and now we've made that commit and we can go we can carry on to the next step in this process team. So what we're going to do now is we're going to type in clear to clear the screen and then we are going to do a git checkout dash B. Actually, let's uh, hit escape to clear all that out. We're going to do a git branch to see what branches we have now. And now we're going to do a git checkout dash B and we're going to name this 01 and we're going to call it initial styling s-t-y-l-i initial styling then we'll hit enter and we'll do a git now we're now we're on that branch if we do a git branch we're on this branch now we can go do our initial styling team and actually team i changed my mind i don't want to do initial styling i want to do uh, some structure so we need to add more structure to our page just so we can be able to style this right now we have our ULs and our LIs but I want to group some things together and I want to add some IDs and some classes to them so what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit the up key to bring back that git checkout command and instead of initial styling we're gonna put um, add adding ADD adding structure and so we're just explaining to ourselves what this branch is is supposed to be for and I'm numbering them so that, that I can see them in order and I can see the process that I went through all these things. Now, you don't have to do it this way. I don't know if anybody does it this way, but because of the way I do tutorials, I would like to to sort of track how I go through things in case I need to go back. I can just get rid of everything I did and go back to the last place that things were working. So and this is just and this is also formatted and laid out in a way in order to show you how Git works and how you can use it and, and give you some ideas ideas on what what this tool makes possible all right so team so we're going to create this one and then we are going to do a git branch and it's going to show that we have three branches and now we're just going to go back and we're going to rename this initial styling we can name this uh 
we can make this branch zero two and so what we'll do is we'll copy this to the clipboard and over here we'll do a get branch and a dash m for modify and we will paste in this and then we want to change that so we'll paste it again and we'll paste that to uh, zero two and now when we do our get branch after we hit enter of course and when we do our get branch we see that we have this branch this branch and this branch now zero two is going to be based on a branch that is older than so right now when we go in and we add our structure when we go into zero two it's not going to have any of the structure that we added but i'm going to show you how to fix that team and how to, and how we can just keep driving along but for now what we're going to do is we're going to stay on adding structure and we're going to go back to our html and actually we can do a get status and we can see that nothing is we haven't made any changes and now we're going to go in and we're going to make some changes to our page so first we are going to make a wrapper and this wrapper is going to go around our entire page so we're going to call this uh app we're going to give it an id of a wrapper and then after the r if we hit tab it'll just complete and i put an e there so we'll put an r and then we'll go down and we're going to grab all this other code and we're going to put it inside of our wrapper so we'll just grab all of this h1 all the way down to the bottom of our page to this last ul control x go up here and control v so now we have our wrapper and inside of that wrapper we're going to add another container that's just going to contain all of the content on our page so we can give this a width and then center it in the in the middle of the page so we'll give this an id of we'll go and actually we could just type id well we can't type id we would have to type it like a, a html tag or something but using emit if we just type this normally we would have to type div and then inside of that div we would go id and then we'd hit tab and we would give it an id and this id is going to be content container and we'll hit enter here and actually not there we'll put enter here and then we'll grab all this content again so we'll just go all the way to the bottom of the page control x and we'll go back up into this div and we'll tab and we'll paste this in there and now we have this container that will contain our content and we have this wrapper that will contain our whole page now let's create some containers for this other stuff so we will call this the header h-e-a-d-e-r and header is an actual built-in uh, tag for html and what it does is it just tells other software browsers whatever that hey this part of the page contains all of the 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 description and information about the rest of the content on this page that's what this is that's what this is, is in, intended for but a lot of people don't use it that way and we're going to use it our own way too so we're going to give it an id and we're going to call this the header save and actually we don't even need to do that because there's only one header so we don't even need an id but we can give it a class of a header if we if we want and then that would enable us to style all of the headers on all of the pages across our entire website the exact same way so anyway we're just going to leave this as header and then down here this is going to be a navigation so we're going to give it a nav which is a built-in html tag and we'll hit enter and we'll put this ul inside of this nav so we'll control x and we'll paste this in here and we're going to do the same thing down here we're just going to make another nav and we'll take this and we'll put this inside of that nav control x and control v now if we want to style our navs all we have to do is grab the nav tag and then we can style our navs now uh, all of our spacing is all kind of messed up right here so what we're going to do is we're going to do a right click and we can do format document and it'll fix all of our spacing really quick so now that all of our spacing has been quick i mean all of our spacing has been done what we can do is we can we can add some additional information in order to style these things individually so we have two navs so we we can style both navs that we need to but we should give them individual ids in case we need to style each one individually 
So in the, inside of this nav, we'll go ID and we'll give this ID of main dash nav. And what I'm doing is I'm using a a dash in between these just so I can remember in my mind that when I go to style these in over in the CSS that um that I use this sort of naming convention and it'll be easier for you to remember okay the main nav it, it has the ID of main nav so I'll just grab that and then we'll have this ID and we'll give this ID of uh, well we, we could call it secondary nav or we can call it social we'll call it social media nav so now this has an idea of social media nav and now we can style that any way we want and when we really get into like and in, not necessarily in this course but when you get into JavaScript and you start to think about how applications are structured you begin to think about how all these things go together and so if we can reach out and we can grab the navigation that has an idea of social media nav then that means we can grab all the content inside of it so we can loop over this content and we can say hey if the li contains a particular keyword then we're going to replace this with an image and so we could write a program that makes it super easy for us to add social media icons to any web page just using a javascript library that we create that says hey right if they, if i receive uh this input and it has this element or it has this tag and it has this id let me hit control z because i made a change there and it has this id then look and see if it's a part of a list and if it is look at the list item and see if the list item matches a word in this database and if it does then replace that word with this image of this social media icon and 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 once you realize that like you can begin to make all kinds of stuff for all different kinds of of uses and applications and programs or whatever team so that's just another way to think about this so we're going to give this social media nav and now we have these two navs. So we've got our wrapper, which we can style. We've got our content container, which we can style. We've got our header, which we can style. And then in here, we're gonna give this an ID of logo text. And this H2, we're gonna give this an ID of clock. And so now we have our initial structure and we can go in and we can begin to style all this stuff. So what we're going to do now is we're going to save by hitting control S. And if we have multiple documents open and we want to save everything, we can hit control plus K and then S and that'll save everything. We're going to go back over here to our PowerShell window. We're going to clear this all out. We're going to do a get status and we will be able to see what has changed. And if we do a clear and then a semicolon and a get diff, It'll run the clear command and then it'll run this get diff command and we can see the differences. And if we hit the space bar, it'll page it down and it'll show us the changes that we've that we've made. And so we can keep doing that and we can see everything that we've changed. So you can see like we've got all this code here and it's showing us that we've gone and we've added new code. So we can hit quit. We can hit Q for quit. We'll clear this all out and we will do a git add dash dash all semicolon and then we'll do a git commit dash m for modify and we're going to add that message in here and our message is going to be added uh, more structure for better page styling and we'll hit enter and that is that do another git status boom and now we have our initial actually I'm sorry get status now we have our initial page structure saved so we can go on to our other branch now if we go get branch and look at our branches and then we do a get checkout and we're gonna check out zero two because that's where we're gonna add our initial styling so we'll put a space and then we'll double click right click and right click again and hit enter now we're on this branch and you can see on this branch we don't have any of that initial styling. I mean, not that initial styling, but that added structure that we had before. And that's because when we made that branch, that stuff didn't exist. So what we can do now is we can bring in all those changes. So we can do a git merge and we can merge in the changes from this from this branch. And so we'll grab our 
added structure or added adding structure and then right click and right click again so now we're going to merge our adding structure well actually we're we're on adding structure hold on let's 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 double check this right so we're going to do a git git branch all right so what we're going to do is we're going to check out all right so we're on initial we're on initial styling so we're good so if you're not on initial styling check out initial styling and what we're going to do is we're going to merge in adding structure so we're going to do a git merge and then adding structure we'll double click right click right click and then we'll hit enter and it'll bring in all those changes and now we can when we do a git status it's going to say we're on a clean tree um, so now we can go on and we can add our initial styling and we have all the structure that we had from that previous commit so what we're going to do now is we're going to jump into our main.css and I have that open here but I'm going to close it so I can show you a trick so I'll close main.css and what we can do is we can hit control P and we can type CSS and it'll show us all of the files in our project that have CSS and if we want to do HTML we could do the same thing or we could do JS it doesn't matter so we'll go CSS and that's how we can quickly move between files team so what we're going to do now is we are going to call the the ID wrapper and we're gonna apply a style to it so we're gonna call up wrapper and we are going to put some curly brackets and the, with the style we're going to place on it number one is display flex this is going to say all of the content that's inside of the wrapper we're going to display flex so this means we can use flex properties for centering and aligning all of our content now we're going to set our width for this to 100 view widths and this is just going to say hey center this across the entire page and actually before we do that what we'll do is we'll comment this out and we'll do a control enter to make a blank line and we will put a background color background color of black well actually we'll put dark gray dark gray so we'll go with dark slate gray and we'll save and if we go over here and refresh uh, let's see our wrapper display with okay so it may not be showing yet because we haven't given it a a width attribute so let's see so we'll go back and put our width here and we'll go save and it's not showing which tells me that something is not right actually let's check this background we'll go dark gray again and we'll go dark slate gray and we'll save that and here let's do this we'll close out our live server we'll close that and we'll open it again we've got live server back all right so now i know that the problem that i'm having is because of my html and css and i think we need to set the height too so we'll go uh height actually what we can do is we'll just control well we'll now that we're on this line we'll alt shift and we'll just go down and we'll set this for view height and we'll change the width we'll change this to height h-i-g-h-t and we'll save and still nothing what is going on here uh background color with height ah uh, so i see what the problem is if we go back into our index we haven't added our css so we're going to do a, a link and hit tab and then in this where it says href we're just going to put a dash we're going to put css and we're going to put main.css and when we save we get this background now we've got this white border around it and we don't want that white border so if we go back over here to our css if we go up here to the body body and we do a padding zero and a margin zero m-a-r-g-i-n zero set those and we'll hit save those both go away now we have this initial styling that's still set by the browser we can leave that if we want or we could set everything so we could go here and take body and we could set everything to zero and then we could just start and style everything ourselves so this is what we'll do team we'll just leave this like this and we'll style everything from here on out on our own
Now we're going to go down to the next line and we're going to add an align items and we're going to center those items and we are going to do a justify content and we are going to center that content. Now what the align item does is it takes the items and it aligns them center on the page. And I can't remember if this is from left to right or from top to bottom, but it's one of those two. And then justify does the same thing. I think justify will move our content down on the page. So if we go here like this and we hit save actually, so justify moves it to the center, but there is another way. Like if we were to go, instead of def if we set display flex and we set uh, flex direction to column then that will move it down to the center of the screen so we'll leave that like so we'll get rid of this flex direction control shift k and we'll save and now it just goes over here to the center and when we add our line items it's going to move down to the center of the page and so flex direction would do the same thing so if we go back here and we do a flex direction and then we go column save it would still be in the center it's just that the axis would change so now our align item which uses the which uses one axis it would be shifted to the other and justify content center which uses one axis that would be shifted to another so that's uh it, it's a little bit confusing team but if you want to dig deeper into flexbox i would definitely check out the code 365 startuplab.com where I'm making courses that go deeper into that stuff team. So now that we've got our wrapper in the center of the page, I mean, not, not our wrapper, but now that we've got our main container. And so what we can do is we can go down here and just to show you guys, we can go grab our, where is it? Our, we've got our content container. So we'll double click. Well, actually we'll select all of this control C, go back to our main.css, add a asterisk control V and then a couple uh, opening and closing curly brackets and inside of there we can put a background color of uh, we'll just go orange or R A N G E orange red and semicolon save and now you can see we've got this background color here behind our content now notice that the these these uh the the dots for the unordered list they fall outside of this content because they don't fit with the the, the margin and padding of the individual words and so it's kind of, it gets kind of complicated to explain but if we wanted to encompass these then we would add some sort of padding so we could go padding uh one pixel or something like that and then it would move over a little bit but like we want to encompass them all so we would set our padding to like let's go five pixels and see what happens five it's still not enough so we'll go 10 and that's not enough so we could go 15 and that's just enough and we can go a little wider just for comfort and save and so now we've encompassed all of this stuff and what we're doing is we're styling this container in the background and because we gave that container because we gave this a because we gave this a display of flex what it does is it takes this content in here and because we removed our padding and our margin from everything in the in the body so like all these major all the major uh html elements then what happens is we get this we get this this little container and actually if we go over, if we go up here and we take off our line items this box will just move up to the to the top of the page and so what we're doing is when we say display center we're saying hey right we're gonna we're gonna take control of all this additional space and we're just not gonna have it there and so that's like when we that's when we when we add these stylings these styles this is what's happening right we're just telling it hey right we're, we're gonna we're gonna make this a container and we're gonna center and we're not gonna take up any extra space all right, and so that's why we get our content container down here at the center of the screen. Now to make this match a little more to the design that we're actually creating, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this background color and we're gonna make this, uh, we're gonna make this black and we're gonna give it a opacity of 0.7, save. And now it's a little gray. And actually that's not what I want. I don't want that opacity. So we're gonna take that out. We'll go Control Shift K. And we'll save that so we'll just have a black background for now and then later we can replace that with the image 
and then we've got our this area here what we can do is we can take off this color altogether and hit save and now we can't see any text but we can give this a color of white and that's going to make all of the text white so we just go here color white and save so now all of our text is white and then we can do a I think a content align center and I may be I may be wrong what I'm thinking about is how do I get all of this other stuff center so let's do let's see if we can do a text align and then we'll do a center save and now all of the text is moved to the center but we don't want the navigation to be uh, aligned to the center so we'll have to come up with a different way to style that so for now what we'll do is we'll go down here and we can say header and we'll hit save and nothing's going to happen but we can take this text align and we can move this down we'll get rid of this blank line and we'll go save and now our text align our not our text align but now our uh, our our heading group is aligned to the center but our navs are still not in the center. So now we're going to go up to our content container and we're going to set the content container display to flex. And what this is going to do is initially when we set something to display flex, it set it makes it so all of the the content is laid out side by side for the content that's inside of that container. So if we go back and we look at our content container, it contains a header, it contains this nav, and it contains our social media nav. So it contains all those things. So now they're all lined up side by side. We got our header up here, we've got our Facebook nav, I mean, we've got our main nav here, and then we got our social media nav. So what we're gonna do is if we go into our CSS, we can change that direction. So if we go into our content container, we can say flex direction and this is what I was talking about before flex direction and we could change this to column and now our direction is going to go up and down so if we save that now everything is up and down if we look over at our page we can see right now everything is lined up but when we make this bigger the the text is indented just a little bit and that's because this is based on some sort of uh width that they have set and then as the window gets smaller that text sort of moves over until everything sort of falls into the same position so as you can as you see like when we move at this point there's a break point right here that says hey we're gonna remove whatever margin we have on this text and we're just going to move it so it's directly underneath everything else so we want to get that i'm not really sure about how to do exactly what they've done but we're gonna we can produce something that is uh will work just as well if not even better so what we're going to do team is if we go down here into header because we've changed our flex direction what we can do is we can do a justify i think it's justify content justify content and actually not in not inside of our header team so we'll get we'll get rid of this line by hitting uh control shift k and then we'll go back up here and we'll do a justify content and we'll do a center save and that didn't work so let's do i think maybe align content or content align content Yeah, so there it is align content center save and still all right so we've got content container what's going on so display flex all right team so i got rid of that entire line and what we're looking for is we're looking for justify content all right so we'll grab this control c go down here control v control s justify content no not justify content team it is align items let's see so we'll go back here a l i g n dash items save and now we've got our text that's moved over just a little bit now if we go and we go out and we move this around everything everything sticks in place it doesn't we don't have that break point but if we want to add that break point where that this this indentation goes away we can another thing that you see is that down here this nav is indented as well and that 
the reason why that happened is is because of the 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 social media nav is outside of our other nav and this other nav is wider than the social media nav so this goes over further so what we can do is we can take a look at that here if, if we go here and we do a nav and we add a white border around everything so we go border uh, one pix solid actually we'll do like uh we'll do dotted dotted or dash dashed and we'll do like light blue light and blue save and now we can see like we get this border around these two and this this social media navigation isn't as it's not as wide as the other one so we end up with this issue where this gets centered so what we can do is we can take off this kind we can take off this align item center and we can save and now everything goes back to the left but what we can do is we can add padding p-a-d-d-i-n-g padding left of of and we'll put like 25 we'll put 30 pixels 30 pixels and save and actually oh let's and we will move this down here into our nav and we'll hit save and now all of our navs are moved over and we can do that again so let's do it like uh, we'll go let's go 40 pixels save and so now they're all saved and since we're in here let's do this we can add a list style type and we'll make that none and we can save that uh, hold on oh I know what it is team we got to add it to our li's so it is going to be in our nav ulli so what we'll do is we'll go down here and we'll move we'll just move this header up here closer to the top so it makes so it makes sense so it's like sitting in the a place where you'd expect to find something with the name of head so we'll shift all the way to the end of this we'll move this up to like right here I think and we'll move it again if we need to but we can go back down here to our nav now we'll save that and as you can see nothing's changed over here we'll go back down and we'll go and we'll create another one down here and we'll go nav U L L I and then inside of there we'll go we'll take this list style type we'll move this down here control shift k to get rid of that line and save and now all of those go away now we need some spacing so if we go back and we look at the actual supreme website they've got some spacing right underneath this header and they've got some spacing right underneath this nav and so what we can do is we can do that too so we'll go back over here to our html and we've got our let's see up here we've got our content container our logo text we've got our header so we'll go back into our main and right underneath well here header text align center we can go margin bottom b o t t o m and we can set that margin bottom to let's say uh, we could go like 25 pixels and we'll save and now we get this space underneath not a lot but let's see we can break this out and we can move it right here and we can grab our CSS and let's break this out so we just grab this window down here and we can resize it over like this and now we can just see all of those at the same time and so we can add some more spacing so if we go up to our header we can change this to let's change this to 48 and save let's go 66 save and as you can see like our box is kind of moving up as we do this so this is lined up but this is getting further away and that's because we have our center set by uh is is basically determined by whatever the height of this element is so when we add more space the element gets taller so let's try this let's try 100 pixels 100 pixels save all right and so that's a little better and then down here under our social under our nav we can do uh main nav so we've got our nav and we'll go main dash nav and that has an id so we'll use that id let's go back control shift enter to put a line there and we'll add our opening and closing curly brackets and we can go margin bottom 
and we can set that margin bottom to let's do like uh, 50 pixels 50 pixels save and now we've split this up kind of like how they have it and let's go back we'll make this 33 save and then now a little a little a little better team now if we look in here inside of our main nav we've got all of our text but it's, it's spaced out in the in their site so what we're going to do is we're going to go inside of our main nav and we can do a we'll go down here we'll go main dash nav and we'll go ul and li and we can say padding well actually we can go let's see let's see we can go padding top padding top and we could go like uh let's go 10 pixels 10 pixels save and now we get this spacing and i added the padding at the top because i didn't want to create any more padding at the bottom but we could ideally i mean we could go padding top and bottom so we could go padding top and padding bottom 50 i mean not 50 but five so we can go padding and then we'll just set all of the padding at one time and we can say we want our top to be uh five pixels and we want our bottom to be five pixels and then we want our left and our right to be zero pixels and so we're not worried about padding to the left and the right and now we get we get the same effect only there's five pixels at the bottom of this one and five pixels at the top of that one and then we'll have uh 10 pixels in between because we're using a combination so if we go here and we set this to 10 save now things are spaced out a little more along the lines of what they have over here team and also what we can do down here is in our social media nav and let's see if we can go back i don't think we've made one yet so if we go down here we got our main nav we got our nav let's move this nav up here just so it's in a place where the other navs are so when we start looking uh we aren't confused and then down underneath this we're just going to put a social media nav so we'll go down here asterisk and we'll go social dash media dash nav and our opening and closing curly brackets and then here we are going to do a display d-i-s-p-l-a-y and we'll go flex flex save and then we'll go flex direction flex direction oh no not flex direction flex direction and we'll set this to uh what is it column row save and i may be i, I may be doing this wrong let's see i just want to see something real quick yeah so what we need so not in the social media nav where is it so let's go back here and look let's look at our nav social media nav we have our ul we have our li's so actually we want social media nav ul and we want to set that to display flex control shift k save and now everything is lined up and if we add social media nav ulli so we grab this we go down here we put a space in here we can go we don't want it we don't want the display we don't want the ul we want the we want the ulli and it doesn't need to be display flex but we want padding so we can put padding on the left and the right so we can go padding is equal to zero for the top and bottom but on the left and the right we can say we want to put 10 pixels of padding and now everything is sort of split up team so this is how we can space things out but also in addition to that so let's see we've got zero one zero uh, we've got this this area over here so let's take a look at that so if we go back here and we bring this all the way up and we do a control shift i we can bring up our dev tools and we'll we'll just refresh this page actually control w control r to refresh we'll move this down so maybe we can see a little better we grab that all right and so if we grab this arrow right here and go over and just sort of scroll over our page we can see we got this nav social media and there is this what looks to be like some sort of margin of padding so we've got this padding of 40 percent off to the side 
And so in order to, to make this be centered, we can go back over to Visual Studio Code and in here we can set our padding on the, so we've got our top and our bottom. So we can go zero, top is zero. And then now we would say our left and our right are zero, but we don't want that. We want, how is it? How do I put it team? So let's go padding left. Padding dash left and we'll set that to zero. Save. And now that padding on the left is now we go now we do our padding. Actually, let's do this. We'll just go padding right. Is ten pixels. Save. Uh oh padding. Oh we got we got the G save. And now uh, it's, a, it's, it's centered with the rest of our text, kind of, kind of, sort of team. And so we would have to mess around with this in order to, to get everything exactly like we want. But let's go back into our dev tools and take a look at this again and see what's going on. So let's click this. All right, social media nav, social media nav, UL, social media nav. So what we can do is actually not down here in the UL if we go to social media we have a social media nav UL let's go and let's just make a social media nav so we'll copy this and we'll alt shift and then hit up and then we'll go down and we'll add a space there we'll go up here control shift K to delete those lines we'll just make this nav and then we're gonna turn off this padding so we're gonna say padding left it's going to be zero and save and now this moves all the way to the side and what we can do inside of here because we have this display because we have our UL set to display flex we can do something like this we can do a justify content space around and then enter nothing okay so nothing happens there what we got to do is got to move this up to here and so it's now inside of this UL and it's saying all of the content inside of this nav inside of this this UL element which is here we are going to justify it by putting space around it so if we do like that now we get this now everything is centered and so down here they have icons so what we're going to do is we're going to replace this text we're going to replace with icons at some point but we still got some more styling to do team but we have already come so far and we've made a bunch of changes. So let's go back over to PowerShell and do a git add all dash dash actually git add all semicolon. And then we do a git commit dash M and we're going to call this um, added all positional styling enter and now we have that done so we have our initial styling and we can even change the name of this branch if we want to positional styling so we'll, we'll do just that we'll hit clear put a semicolon and then we'll do a git branch so we can see the name of our the names of our branches and then we'll hit enter and we are going to rename this initial styling we're going to rename this to um what was it what was it called let's do a git log and look at our log and we can see our initial commit added all positional so we're going to rename this positional styling and look i have a typo in here and we can go back we can actually change these too but i don't know exactly how to do that so we're not going to worry about it right now but we're definitely going to change the name to positional styling so we'll hit q to get out of here and we'll clear so we'll do run the same command. We'll do the clear and we'll do git branch and then we'll do a git uh, git git uh, branch dash modify and we're going to take our initial styling double click double click and right click to copy it to the clipboard right click again to save it and then we just need to make sure there's a space back here and right click again and we just change this from initial styling so we can go 
back 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 we're going to change it from initial styling to what was it called again guys i can't remember i can't remember initial styling to positional styling so we're going to go back and we go p o s i t i o n a l positional styling enter and then when we do a get branch now we have this positional styling so what we're going to do now is we're going to do a get branch dash b uh, well actually hold on let's do a get status to see if there are any untracked changes so we're good so now we can do a get checkout dash b and we can name this one we'll just double click this and right click and right click again and paste it in there and we're going to call this one zero three and we're going to give it a name font styling so we're just going to go uh, right here and on the on my keyboard i'm gonna hit the delete key to get rid of all of that up to positional and i'm just going to type in font and now we have a font styling so now we're on this section here and we can go and we can style out our fonts as you can see they have a slightly different font than what we've got going on here so we're going to find some fonts that match what they have team so what we're going to need now is a font so we're going to go out to google font so we'll just open this tab and drag it out and double click it and now we're going to go to fonts.google.com and we are going to find a font that matches sort of our supreme font and i think b vietnam is pretty close if we go here and we type in actually let's go back and we click down here we can type in our title which is going to be superior superior all right so we'll set this to uh extra bold all right and so this looks this looks pretty good so we'll add this and then there is another font that we need that looks more like this type that they have and I think that's like close to courier but I'm not positive and I'm sure there's a font in here somewhere so I'm just gonna look through these fonts till I find one and what we can do is we can go over here and we can just grab well we can't grab that but we can grab hmm let's let's go to our page let's go to our HTML and we will grab right here we'll grab this clock Control C and we can go back to fonts.google and up here at the top we can type in that and it'll show us what that looks like in all these different fonts and now that'll make it easier for us to find a font that matches the one that they have here so we'll go back and I'm gonna look until I find this font so after a little while of searching I found this one Gouda Goida and let's see we've got regular and we should be able to adjust this font size so we'll add this one here and if we click down here in this corner we can see both our fonts and then we can see this font family so we'll grab this font right here and we'll copy it control c and then we'll go back to our our actual code visual studio code and we will paste this font up here where our style sheets are so we'll go let's just make this big and we'll go right underneath here we'll hit control enter and we'll paste this in so now we have that font we'll save it and we'll go back over here and we will add these fonts at the top so we can go do 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 we can go back over to google fonts and we'll grab both of these and we'll go control c and we'll go back into our style sheet and here we'll just go we'll just paste these both in right there and we're going to separate these and we'll name one um we'll name one like logo text so we'll go uh actually what we can do is we can do this we can go over here and we can look and we can see we've got our logo text so here yep what we'll do is we'll go ID of logo text and then we can put our B Supreme font I mean our B Vietnam in there and then here 
we can put our link text. And we'll just give this a style of, I mean, we'll give it an ID of link text. And then we'll go here and we'll go like this. And actually our link text, we're going to give this an ID of, we'll give it a class of link text. So dot link text. And now we've got our logo text and we'll give it a class of logo text. Well, actually we'll leave this. We'll just go logo text dot save and now we'll go back over here and we'll make this smaller and we will minimize this window and now we can see all three of these and we can see our site right here in the middle and what we'll do is I'll just zoom in a bit so you guys could see that font size and let's scroll up can we scroll up we can't scroll up refresh actually we'll close this developer tools and so now it's a little bigger and we can see all of this stuff side by side let's zoom out a bit right so what we'll do is over here where we have this idea of logo text we'll give this a class so we'll go class is equal to logo text and now our class up here changes and we can also go down into our let's see our main net well actually our clock we can give a class of different a different kind of text so we'll go this is our clock and we'll give it a class of uh, this is going to be our link text so link and text and save and now uh oh something has gone wrong let's check this out let's go back and we'll look at our link text five and family is go to sans serif so let's go back and look at our index.html and well actually let's go back here we'll look at our logo text be Vietnam sans serif okay all right so let's see we got logo text link text I'm confusing myself guys I'm sorry so we got class link text and our clock is styled as link text but it's styled as a h2 which makes it extra big and extra bold and we don't want that so what we're gonna do is our h2 is we're gonna give it a different actually we can we can take this out and as you can see, Z, we can make this like just a regular P tag. And we'll go over here and we can make this a regular P tag as well. P save. And that styles it in a smaller font because that's what the, the P tag is using. So what we can do is we'll control Z and we'll just set this back to H2 and then we'll save. And if we go over here into our our style sheet we can set our h2 to be we'll set our h2 and we'll set the font size to font size and we'll set this to 1 rem and that should set it to a default base of 16 percent or or six or a font a font size of 16 so let's see if we do like font size 16 pixels 1 6 px save it's because 16 pixels is typically the default for for web browsers now we can make this smaller like we can make it a 10 and it'll get smaller we can make it a 15 and it'll be a little bigger and then let's add the font weight so we'll go font dash weight and we'll set this to the smallest font weight possible which is 100 and now it gets a little thinner and let's make it smaller yet again so we'll go 10 pixels save not one pixel 10 pixel save and now it's even smaller and so I think this is about the size that they have it there so we can go down some more and like we have our nav down here so we'll just set our font size for all our navs I mean not our font size but we'll set our our font and family for all our navs we can set that to link text so actually hmm how do we do this we can go back over here and inside of our content container we can set our font family so we'll set an ID we'll set a class of link dash nav save I mean not link nav but link text save 
and now we get that same sort of setup over here but the um is too big so we'll go back over here and under our link text we can change this font size so the same thing we did for our h2 we can do for everything else so we'll just go grab this control c and we'll go down here to our link text and we'll paste that here control v control save and now everything gets a little bit smaller and actually we don't even need this h2 anymore if we go comment this out and hit save everything is still the same team so we can go get rid of this h2 right here and save and now we've got something that looks a little closer to what they have our fonts still aren't all the way on i think oh it's because our let's see our link text we have set to gouda and actually this still doesn't look the way we want so let's go back down here to nav and let's try a different font family so we'll go font dash family and we'll set that to courier and now that looks a little better so let's try this we've got courier here let's go up here to our not our logo text but to our where is it h2 not h2 to our link text and let's comment this out and let's set our font family to courier and save and now that looks a little better it looks a lot closer to what these guys have going on here so what we'll do is we'll get rid of this font family control shift k and we'll save that and now we're a little closer to where we want to be team so what we're going to do now is we're going to go back and we're going to make a, another commit so we will go over to powershell by hitting alt and tab and we're back in powershell and we will scroll up and see if we can find a git add all and then we've got a git commit and we will say added fonts and font styling save and now we do a git status is going to tell us our broken tree is clean we get do a git branch and now we can see what branch we're on and we are going to create another branch so we're going to do a git so we just scroll up till we find a git checkout so we get a git checkout no all right there we go git checkout dash b and we're just going to take this three right here double click this right click right click and we're going to change this to four and we're going to say we're going to change this to logo styling so l o g o and we'll save that actually not save but we'll hit enter and now if we do a git branch we can see that we are on another branch where we are going to be styling our logo so let's go back to visual studio code and we'll go over here and so we've got our logo and we've got our logo text we've set our font family for it but now what we need to do is we need to uh this is this has a red background so let's see if we can give this a red background let's take a look at our index.html and we've got our classes and we've got our logo text what we're going to do is we are going to add an id so we'll just do number or or hashtag and then we are going to call this the uh, logo container i n e r and we'll hit tab enter and then we'll put this inside of here and we'll go control shift k and we'll save and then in here we're going to make a clock container so we'll do an id and we'll go clock dash container container tab enter and we'll put our clock in here control shift k to get rid of that line save and now you see nothing has changed but check this out and if we go over into our main.css and we go up here and we can put this anywhere in our css it doesn't matter i'm just sort of placing this stuff where it seems logical to me and we're going to put a hashtag logo dash container and we're going to make the background we're going to make that red save and now we have this red background team so if we go back and we take a look at this there is some space underneath this obviously so what we need to do is we need to add some margin this is going to add some margin underneath our logo container 
and we'll just add 25 pixels for now and if we save now we get this space between our logo and our clock and actually we, let's make this a little less we'll go like 18 pixels save and that's close to what they got going on here now we've got some space out here around our container what I want to do is I want to try something let's try logo text and let's do a background of we'll do a background color of red color and then we'll go red save and we don't see any change but if we go here and we comment this out and save we get pretty much the same effect so let's try so what we're gonna do now team is we're gonna take out let's just let's think about this so we got our logo container we've got our margin set to 18 let's turn this off control save we'll get rid of that margin and then let's set our width we'll shift k control uh, control z control shift enter and we will set our width w-i-d-t-h we're going to set our width to uh we'll set it to like 100 pixels save and now uh things are a little smaller all right which is good which is good so now what we can do is we can say we want the margin to be auto save and now we've got some issues here right so we've got so we've got our margin set to auto but it doesn't it didn't move back so let's take a look at our logo it's because we're inside of our logo text so what we'll do is we'll go up to our logo container and we'll save and now that container is centered but we still need more margin so we'll go margin bottom b-o-t-t-o-m and we can set that to uh 50 pixels again actually it's going to be 25 i think px and we'll go back to five save and oh this should be like this and now we've got that margin back and we've got a little bit of um a little bit of 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 padding still on the top so more than on the bottom so now we have to fix that issue so what we're going to do is we're going to go down here and we're going to move this background color up to our logo container we'll save and then we can set the height of this logo container to whatever we want so we can say height is going to be equal to 100 pixels save and now that's too tall so let's make it like 50 save too tall let's go 10 too small and let's try 15 and too big <laughs> 15 all right there you go so 15 too too big uh let's try 20 save and 25 and 30 let's try 30 three zero save uh oh back here and three zero save and uh let's try 27 27 save and so now we're a little closer to the size we want it to be but our text is still in the wrong place so what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to move our text up so what we're going to have to do is set a margin not not a margin let's see if we go padding p-a-d-d -D, padding bottom we let's try 10 pixels 10 pixels and save and so this isn't doing what we want it to do so we're going to have to position this in a different kind of way so what we're going to do is we're going to control shift k and delete this padding bottom we're going to go up here we'll hit save and nothing's changed we'll set our display for our logo container we're going to set that to flex so now we can use flex styling and as you can see our text has gone down to the bottom in the left so we can do something like justify content and we can justify that to the center and we'll save and now our content is justified center and we can align a l i g n we can align a l i g n item and we can align that to the center and save actually let's see align content let's see uh, what is it? Align item. Line items centered. 
and still not quite where we want. So what we're going to do is we're going to go down here to our logo text and we're going to go position relative and this means we're going to position the text relative to itself and we are going to set the bottom uh, 5 pixels px save and this is going to move this up we can set this to 3 so basically what we're saying is we're saying hey take your current position and then relative to yourself right you're going to put three pixels underneath you and that's going to raise you up so that's why we're putting this on the text and we could go 3.5 3.5 or we could i mean we could do whatever the sky the sky is really the limit team so what we can do another thing we can do is notice that this is a little closer to the top so we can set this to like five pixels uh, let's go six pixels save and now it's really close to the top and we can go up here and we can make our background we can make this height we can make this like 25 and let's see let's go let's just go 20 and see what happens and then we'll go down here and we can move this back to like three save and let's go four save and now like we're, we're, get, we're, we're getting we're getting closer and so since we're inside of this logo text what we can also do here is we can raise the font family too so we can say font dash family no not font family font size and we can say let's make this font size um uh, gotta put an s here first all right so we can say let's make this font size like uh, 32 pixels or something like that 32 and px and save and now our text gets bigger but then we'll have to go and we'll have to adjust our box for that for that text which is i mean you know it is what it is so anyway so i but I, the reason why i wanted to make this bigger is so it better matches this so we're going to change this to 33030 30, save uh oh save and now it's it's a little bigger and we'll go up here and we'll change our height to we'll change our height to match it so we'll go 30 and save and that's not that's tall enough well almost tall enough so we'll go 35 and save and here for our width we need to set that a little more so for our width we'll go like 120 save and let's go 125 and let's go uh, 150 save and so now that's a that's a little better so let's change this to like 140 and that is so we're getting there team we're getting there now we need we just need to make this a little taller so we'll make this a height of 37 and we need to move our text up a little bit so remember down here we can go let's go six and we'll go five and save and so now I think that's a that's a, that's about right team we're about good and we've got our clock in there and actually I'm looking in there theirs is a little bit smaller than their actual clock area now we could fiddle around with this all day and make it look exactly like that but there's really no need to team now what we're going to do is we're going to go grab this light blue borders that we have and we have them down here we will control shift k to delete that and save and now we have this fully centered page with our 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 um what is it our our navigation links are a little bit off down here but we can fix all that stuff team so if we hit a control zero this is what our page looks like now and we hit a control zero there this is what their page looks like so still pretty close we got some work to do team we have to add our social media icons and we have to add our background so let's carry on but before we do that let's go over to PowerShell again and we're going to do a get status and as you can see the same thing before we see all these changes we made changes in our index and all these other places so we're going to go grab the command the git add all and then we're going to do a git commit and in this one we're going to say style the logo style the logo and we will hit enter and save that now we're going to get ourselves another branch so we're looking for git checkout dash b we're going to change this to a five and we're going to call this the social media icon so we we'll go social
media icons. All right, so we'll go styling, styling, social media icons. We'll hit enter. And now we are on a different branch, so we can do a get branch to see where we are. And now we can drive on with styling our social media icons team. So we'll head back over here. And the first thing we got to do is we got to go out to the internet. We got to grab some social media icons. So we can go here and we're going to go out to, uh, I think it's flat icons. Flat, I actually, we'll hit control tab to open another tab. Type in flat icons here. And let's see what we get. Yep, free vector icons. We're going to drop this down here. And here we're gonna put a we're gonna put our social media icon. So we're just gonna put we're gonna put App Store app store. And let's see what we find here. And we aren't gonna find the exact same icon. So we're just gonna grab some icons that we think will work with what it is we're trying to do, team. So we will grab all right. So we'll grab this right here. And I know it's a colored icon. But it just is the way it is. Well, actually, we can't grab that one. So let's go back. Uh-oh, something has broken. So we'll close that and we'll go click here. What has happened? Let's close this. All right, let's 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 try this. We'll go font. Awesome. They have icons as well. And they have, they have most of the icons that we're going to need. So let's see. If we can find a Facebook, Facebook. All right, so we got a Facebook icon here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna say start using this icon. It's gonna ask us how we wanna use it. We do not want to sign up for anything. So it says don't have a project set up. Get started here. Uh, yeah, so we'll do that. And let's see, let's see, let's see. CD Empower Kits. Of lines of code live in under one minute all right so it says we can start for free enter your email to create out so we don't want to create a kit team we just want to use these icons so let's go back and just grab some icons so let's go all right let's start again app store and look there's two right here i think this one might be well we'll try this one so we've got this one right here and let's go in the wild blah 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 all right, let's see, green style, and oh, we can download the SVG, and if we download it, we have to agree to their licensing terms and services. So we're going to agree to their terms, we'll hit agree, and it's going to ask us where we want to download this to. We're going to go to the D drive, we're going to go to the real Casadero, we'll go to our project folder, the uh, superior project, we go in images, and... I have added this folder social media icons and this is where we're going to save our icons to team. So I'm going to save and I already have those. Uh, let's see app store. Nope. So we'll get, I'm going to hit cancel here. So I already have this one. I've got the Facebook icon and I've got the Instagram icon. If you are following along, go ahead and grab those and we will carry right along team. So we'll close this out with a control a W and now we are back over here in all of our are everything that we're working on here team so what we're going to do is we're going to go over into index and we're going to grab those images and we're going to place them right in here so we are going to go img and this is our index.html so we'll go img and in our source we're going to put a dash and we're going to go images social media icons and for this one we're going to put facebook and then let's just hit the windows key and hit up to make this full screen and over here and this helps with this helps with seo as well because we have these images and google doesn't know what they are google or the search engines they just go by whatever we name the image so one we want to name the image something that a search engine would would pick up if somebody was searching for something so we could even go as far to say um like we could aim we can name this image like learn to code facebook icon or something like that and then so and i mean like we could do this so what we can do is we can go right here we can click here actually if we go let's go control so this is a svg file we'll control here and if we go control b we can go into our images and we'll just change the name do 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 social media icons and we'll find our Facebook 
and we'll go rename and we'll at the beginning of this we'll put um, learn to code and then we'll save and then what, what we'll do is we'll just copy all of these so let's close this one we don't need to open it and we'll go rename and I, I said copy it but I didn't copy it so we'll just put learn to code uh oh and let's rename that again so we'll go rename one more time and let's go I forgot to put a, uh, a hyphen behind here learn to code enter and then we'll do it one more time up here under the app store we'll go rename and then we'll go back over here and we'll go learn dash to dash code and so this is just one more thing that the search engine is going to pick up on that say code in this web page and so there we have in our image titles we have that and now all of our image titles don't work so we're going to have to go back and fix those so under under facebook we'll just go dash and then we'll go and we'll grab the learn to code facebook and then under here uh let's see we got all right so then now we'll copy this control c we'll go down here underneath instagram control v and we'll paste we'll put in we'll take all of this out and we'll put a dash and then we'll select the instagram and down here we'll do the exact same thing so we'll just go underneath app store control v we'll paste that in and then we will go and replace this with a dash and we will select the app store brand there we go so now we got that and over here in the alternate text we're going to put um learn html icon hold on learn html facebook icon image and now and then down here we're going to put learn and this, and so we're just sprinkling this seo data all over our website right? and as long as it's relevant to what to what the whole web page is about we'll be okay so we'll copy this right here control c control v control v we'll paste that and so here we'll put uh css and then down here we'll put java script right and so then let's go back over here so if we hit save and we'll hit the windows key and hit the left and put this back off to the left side of the screen so now we should have these social media icons in our page but we can't see them and i'm pretty sure we'll hit control b to get rid of that sidebar i'm pretty sure we can't see them because our background is black so if we remove our background and we save it now we have our social media icons so we'll go back up to our index and if we look these these are big we need these to be smaller so what we'll do is we'll give them a class and so under here let's see actually we'll go we've got i've already added this class of social media icon image size so what we'll do is we'll copy this we'll go into our main.css we'll go down to the bottom control v and we'll hit the start and put a dot in here for class and we'll go back to the end we'll add some curly brackets and inside the curly brackets we're going to put font dash size is equal to well we're going to, we're going to put font size and we'll set that font size to uh seven pixels and we'll save and now things get a little smaller we can set them for five let's set them for three and here we'll go back up to two and we'll save okay we'll set them for four save and so that's a pretty decent size and now they're they're spaced out like this because of the spacing that we have on our text and so actually we don't even need our text anymore we can go back here and we can just delete this so we'll put our cursor here we'll hold the alt key we'll go here and here and now we'll do a control shift to k delete all those lines control s to save and now uh oh what has gone on team let's see let's see so let's go back over here to our main css and we're going to turn our background back on by hitting control and forward slash save and now our icons are gone so we'll control z 
and set our background back to white let's go back over here and let's see what we removed that made our icons disappear did we remove anything hmm interesting all right so let's do a control z and bring those back control s and then let's go back and turn our background back on control s and so our text is there it's just tiny but when we remove the text the images go away so let's see what's going on here team let's go back over here so I figured out that the problem is we set our size based on our font for our icon so what we got to do is we can delete all of these so we'll do that again alt alt and alt holding alt and clicking we do a control shift K save and now all of that stuff is gone away and what we're going to do is going to go into our main.css and here we have this set for font size but let's go back over here and take a look at this social media icon social media icon image size so we have this li so what we can do is we can give this li a width so we can say wid th and we can say we want this width to be 20 pixels 20 pixels save and now our icons come back because we've just set the width on those li items and then when we want to move them closer together we just have to restyle them now the problem that we have now is our background is too dark now we're going to add a background image so we don't really need to worry about what background color to choose so let's go and find ourselves an image but after after team we go over to powershell and we hit the we type in oh geez i'm going to hit clear to get out of here and i'm going to scroll in so you guys can see and in the project of your folder we're going to do a git branch see what branch we're on so we're styling the social media icons and we're going to do a git status and we can see all the stuff that we have changed and then so now what we're going to do is we're going to clear this out and we're going to do a git we're going to scroll up and see if we can find a git commit somewhere so we got a git add all and a git commit we're going to replace this with uh actually hold on let me go back because I did this once and I messed up and I had to go back and do it again. Added social media icons with initial sizing. All right, so we'll use that. And then we are going to do a git commit. So let's see. And another thing we can do in PowerShell is if we do a history, we can see all of the history that we've typed. And then up here we've got command line. So we can do git. So I mean, so we can do H and pipe that to where command line command line is like and then we can give it a wild card so anything that is that contains this string of characters so we can say uh what was it an added initial commit what are we looking for so we're looking for a uh anything in the history that has commit in it so right here we got 38 so we can type uh hashtag 38 and then hit tab and that is going to bring that out like that team so we'll hit enter to make that commit all right so we got nothing to commit now we can do a git branch see our branches and we're going to do a git checkout and we are going to add our image size so what we can do is we can do that same command we did before where we did the search for commit and we can do a check we can look for everything that has checkout in it and we see we got these and in 27 we actually did a checkout so we can do a star 27 and then tab and now we can go and we can paste in we've got this five here so what we can do is we can just replace all of this so we can go six dash and we can go adding a back ground image and we'll put a quotation mark at the end of that and we'll put a quotation mark at the front of this and we'll do a dash b and so now we're saying we're going to check it out we're going to create another branch and we're going to name that branch this uh, six adding branch background image is not a valid branch name uh, because we have spaces so we'll remove these spaces and i'm going to use camel case so we'll be and 
all right so we got adding a background image adding background image so we go enter and now we've switched over to that new branch if we do a get branch you can see that we're on that other branch and now we can add our background image so team what we're going to do is we're going to grab this and we're going to do a control in to make a new window hit the windows key and hit up and we're going to go out to art station.com and we're going to find the image of a white rabbit and we are going to scroll down team until we find a white rabbit we believe is suitable enough for the project that we are creating here team so what we will do is find an image so we've got this guy here and we're going to hit the download button and it's going to ask us where we want to save this to we're going to say we want to save it to the d drive the real casadero in the superior project under images and then we're going to right click we're going to go new folder and we're going to name this background images and we're going to double click on there and we are going to save and now we have this image saved we'll hit Control w to close that out and we will go back into our powershell I mean not our PowerShell but our Visual Studio Code and we are going to find where we had that background color set we're gonna go in here and we're gonna type background image and the background image we are going to specify where it's at using the URL and we'll put some quotes in there and we'll do a dash and now we can go image background image and we'll select our rabbit and we'll go over here we'll put a semicolon and we'll hit save and now we have this rabbit in the background but when we make it big we got two rabbits we don't want that so we'll go back over here we'll go back into visual studio code let's drag our rabbit all the way off to the side here and then we'll grab visual studio code there and we can go back here and we can set some styles for our rabbit so let's figure out where we put him so he's here and what we're going to do is we'll put our cursor right there and we'll just hit control enter to make a blank line underneath and we're going to go background size actually what we'll do is we're going to set the we're going to go background what is it called repeat i think it's background repeat yeah background repeat so if we type r e we can see right here background repeat we're going to set that to no dash repeat save and then when we double click here boom right the bunnies here there's no repeat but we don't want that white spot right there so what we're going to do is we'll put that back and under background no repeat we're going to set the background size to cover and this is going to say hey no matter what size we're going to make this image big enough to fit and now we have the bunny's head here and this this is working out pretty good for us the next thing we want to do to make sure the bunny's always in the middle of the screen is we want to do a background actually is it background it is yeah background position background dash position and we're going to set that to center and we're going to set it to the x position so if the bunny is on a tall screen i don't know when he would ever be but it won't try to center uh it won't try to center it'll just always put the top of the screen where the bunny's head is so we'll go we'll set this to x and we'll hit save and now no matter how big the screen is we always see the bunny's head up near the top where our content is if if it depends right because if the screen is really really big then our content will be small and it'll be in the middle but anyway this sort of works sorry about that team that it is uh Cortana wanted to have a conversation for whatever reason so we put this there and that is that but but now our bunny he is too bright we need to uh, he he's we can barely see our text so what we're gonna do is now that we have our bunny saved we'll go back to PowerShell and we're gonna do the same thing we did earlier we're gonna do a git commit so we'll take a look at our history and so let's see well actually we can run that same command again that we ran before where we did and so we're looking for checkout let's look for uh commit c-o-m-m-i-t and now we've got a bunch of commits so let's do number 41 and hit tab and now we'll do a git add all git commit and we're going to change this to 
added background image so we'll go added background image with positioning and we'll save that and now we are going to check out another branch so we'll go get checkout b and for this one is going to be seven and we are going to set this to adding tint adding background tint so we'll say adding background tint enter and now we're on this new branch so if we do a get branch and i'm just gonna b-r-a-n-c-h i'm gonna hit the uh i'm gonna hit the home key to take my cursor back to the beginning so we'll go home and we will do a uh we'll do a clear screen and we'll hit enter and so now we can see we've got this adding background tint so we can go in and we can begin to add the tint on our background team so when we first built this thing we made our wrapper and then we made our content container so what we're going to need to do is we're going to have to put our wrapper inside of uh of we're going we're going to have to create another another div that covers the whole page but doesn't cover our content that we have in the front here so what we're going to do is right underneath our wrapper we're going to make a div and we're going to give it a class of uh tint tab so put tint and we'll tab and then that's all we got to do there and we'll save and then we'll go to our main.css and right up here underneath well above the wrapper we'll add a class of tint and then we'll put our double dillies here and what we're going to do is we're going to position this position and actually what i'm going to do is let's add a border so we'll go border uh five picks solid black save and so you can't you can't see it yet but as we build this out like you begin to see this border so we're going to add this tent we got this border five pixel solid black and what we're going to do is we're going to position absolute and we're going to position it at absolute top is going to be zero pixels or we could just put zero and we can put the absolute we can put it to the left at zero save and so now we got this little dot at the top of our screen that's that's this thing that we're making so now we're going to take this and we're going to set the width wid th we're going to set that to 100 percent save and now we got this black bar across the top and we're going to set the height to 100 percent save and now we've got this border and because of the way borders work right now we get these now we get these scroll bars so what we're going to do is we will uh we'll set our let's see hold on i'm going to just check, check something here margin zero and padding zero save all right let's see so now okay i thought that was going to change something but no it didn't and so the reason why we got these scroll bars is because we got this border if we take this border off they will go away so if we save now the border is gone now the scroll bars are gone so we're going to add this border back and it, because essentially when we add the border what we're doing is we're adding 10 pixels on both sides plus whatever padding and whatever is attached by default from the html which shouldn't be anything because we removed it all but i'm still seeing like this little gap over here and i don't know what that's from but anyway team what we'll do is we go back down to here and so we've got yeah so our tent so we've got our so we've got our height set and we can go ahead and we can turn off this border so we control shift k and save and now that border is gone and we're going to add a background color of uh rgba rgba and hit tab and we're going to set this to zero 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 and point seven and then we can save that and now we have our background tint and we can make this a little darker we can make this a point uh eight and save and now it gets a little darker so now we still can't see our icon so what we're going to do is we're going to go down to our social media icon image size and we're going to set our background b-a-c-k background 
to uh, we'll set our background color to uh, to gray save and now we've got this little background color here and let's make our height a little well actually let's do this we'll say we want our padding to be a zero pixels save all right and now we'll say we want our width to be we'll say we want our height to be uh 20 pixels 20 pixels and save and so now our background gets a little smaller so let's make it a little taller so we'll go uh 22 save and now we've got like this let's go 23 save and then let's see height 23 padding let's go 22 save and then let's go padding uh two and so now we've got like these little borders around our uh around our icons at the bottom and now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go and uh the well the last thing for us to do is to add our our hover effects well one of the last things team one of the last things we're going to move into our javascript but before we do that what we got to do is we got to go back over to powershell and we're going to do the same thing that we've done before we're going to do a git add all the git commit and we're going to say what we did so we're going to say added tint over background image and added background to social media icons save that and now we'll scroll up a couple times and we'll do a git checkout actually git commit let's do a git status all right now we'll do a git checkout and for here we're going to put eight five six seven eight and we're going to put add links and hover add links and hover effects and so we'll save that and now we can go back and we can start adding our links and our hover effects so to get started we're going to go back to our main.css and we are going to find our nav where is it at so we got our nav right here and then we got our nav ulli we got list style type none we're going to add a on well actually we're going to go we'll copy all of this and we'll go down and make another one of these uh oh control z go back here and we'll say nav.ulli and we'll put a colon and we'll put hover And we can say we want the background color to be red. Save. And now when we hover over these, we get this background color of red. Now this isn't quite like uh, what these guys have over here. So we're going to have to make some adjustments, team. So what we'll do is we'll go back to our page. And as you can see, we have our hovers. And actually, our list style type of none has come back. I don't know what's up with that. Let's save and see what's going on here list style type of none oh and it's because we added this hover right here and let's see so what we're going to do is church of k take that out and let's go Take this right there and control shift enter and I already did this once, but I went back and I erased it and I forgot to put it back. That's why I'm putting this back a second time, team. So here we're just going to put the uh, the hover and then we'll save. And now we should have new ULI hover, the style type, the style type. Oh, we don't want this style type. Now we want background color. So here we go. Back ground color is red save all right so now we've got this deal right here but it's not like this one over here so we got to make some more adjustments so but before we do that we're going to add in all of our link tags so we'll just go back over here to our index.html and all of these are going to contain links so what we can do is we can put our cursor right here at the beginning right after our first li tag and we can hold alt and we can well alt in alt and control and just go down and then we'll hit enter 
and we'll hit enter again. Well, actually, we'll go backspace. Well, no, Z, Z. All right, and then we are going to, yeah, we're going to hit enter one more time, and then we'll go up, and then we'll type A and hit tab, and in here we're going to put an asterisk, and we'll go over to our A tag, hit enter again, and now we'll go down to where we have our news in this, uh, this LI right here. We'll actually grab this LI and shift up, and now we'll put both these inside of here, We'll move our cursor and we'll go, let's see, how do we do this? How do we do this? Hmm. All right, so let's get our cursor back down here to a place where it makes sense. Okay, there we go. Now, and grab our text and put it inside of the our li is all backwards so we got to drag this one up to the top we got to put the news inside of there and now we're good to go so we can control z and we'll go back oh come on guys now we can go back and now we can save and all of these become links so we'll hit escape and that was nerve-wracking let's go uh format document and but now the problem is is that all of our links are are uh they're blue so we can't see them and also we have like this blank space up here that when we go to like there's there's nothing there i don't even know what this is so we'll have to if we do a control shift i we can bring up our dev tools and we'll hit this arrow and we can scroll through these and see what this is up here and it's just the empty li element so that's this one right here where we have this href so we'll delete that and we'll save and now We've got news, but news doesn't have a link. So we got to put a link back here. So we go A, tab, and then we'll put this hash symbol. Look over here, A, and then we'll drag this LI into this A. Control Shift K to delete that empty line. And then we'll do a format document and everything should be formatted. So we'll save now. And now we need to change our links so they aren't white. I mean, so they aren't blue. So we go back to our main.css and we will just put over our a tag. So right above our nav and we can put this anywhere. It doesn't matter. I'm just putting it above our nav because navs have a tag them. So we'll go a and we're going to go color is equal to white. We'll save. And then if we click on a link, it's not it's not going to go anywhere but say but say it does let's say for instance like we go back and instead of here we're going to set this to go to a website so we're going to set this to go to uh hacker news so we'll go hacker news boom All right and we'll grab this hacker news right here copy this control c and we'll go right there boom and then we'll save it well actually that's not going to work. Z, 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 Z. All right, let's see. Let me double check this again. So we've got our main href. All right, so this is where we're going to put our hacker news. We're going to put it right here in the href control V. And we're going to save that. And then down here, we're going to say fall winter 2019 preview. We're going to go over to code market sell. So we'll go code market. No, not code market sell. We'll go right code drink coffee.com. And we're going to go down here to gear for coders and we're just going to click on uh, shop now and grab that. Come on, man. All right. And so we got the store and we grab this control C and we will put that here for the fall winter preview V and down here for the fall winter lookbook. We're going to do the same thing V and then down here for shop. We're going to do the same thing V and down here for, uh, random we're going to send people off to some cool computer programming related website so actually we're going to send them over to the code 365 startup lab.com and at the beginning of this we're going to put https semicolon four slash four slash www dot and then under about we are going to send them to 
our YouTube page. So we'll go, actually, we'll go, yeah, we'll go to uh, the YouTube page. So we'll go https forward semicolon forward slash forward slash www.youtube.com forward slash the real casadero s a d a r o and then down here where we have the stores um hmm for the stores we're just gonna have we're gonna have an amazon link so we'll go amazon so this will be what what we'll do is we'll go over to amazon amazon.com and we're going to pick a book that we like about coding and i like uh eloquent javascript is good learning javascript is good but there's something else more 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 super interesting we'll go the art of programming all right and so the whole box set is 185 bucks so this is what <laughs> we're going to grab this link so we're going to grab a text link from here we'll copy this control c and then we'll paste this right down here bam and so this link will send people over to amazon and then we're going to have our contact and this contact link will send people to a contact list so we will send them over to let's try code market sell dot com and we will go to the contact page contact us and we will see uh no we don't want to do that i haven't even i got this website but i haven't even set it up all right so let's see let's see uh we'll go to write code drink coffee dot com and we'll go down to i thought i had a contact page here Nope, no contact page is there. So let's check out the code 365 startup lab. And let's see if we got a contact here. Let's see. Resources, login, sign up. No contact. There's no contact stuff anywhere. All right. So what we'll do is we'll go contact and we'll have it go over to Twitter. So we'll go https forward slash forward slash uh, www.twitter.com forward slash the real casadero and down here under mailing list we're going to put the hacker newsletter so we'll go hacker newsletter.com and it, it, these some of these links are mine like uh everything but y combinator and hacker newsletter so we'll click here on the hackernewsletter.com, control C, and let's see, we'll go down here to the newsletter link, and we're going to paste that right here, control V, and save. So now we have all these links that go somewhere. So if we go back to our page, and we click on one of these links, it'll this will take us here, but when we go back, ah, so it does exactly what I want it to do. Now we have to get rid of this underline. So if we go back to our main dot css and we look at our a we're going to go text style or text decoration and we're going to set that to none and we'll go save and now our underlines are gone and also we get this um because these are set as links too we get these turned red when we hover over them now one more thing that we want to do is this isn't quite like these guys like if we go over here and we hover over these the red is wrapped around the text and then down here these turn white so what we'll do is we'll go back over here and instead of putting that style on top of the li element we'll put the style on top of the actual text that's inside of it so we'll put it on top of the a element so we'll go so we'll change this from a we'll we'll leave this as li and then we'll just put a and we'll hit save and now what will happen is uh oh let's refresh let's go back all right so i've broken something so let's see what i've done wrong team Ah, so I see what I did wrong team. I put the um I put our A tags in the wrong place. So if we if I zoom out control minus minus and actually well we'll just make this full screen. We'll make it full screen, I'll go control plus one time. So if we go to our LIs where we have our links, I put the links, but then I put the LIs on the outside of them. So I I messed that up. So what we gotta do 
is we have to we have to put our links inside of our our list item elements so how can we do this and I've got it all messed up team so what we can do is let's see we'll go we'll do like this so we'll grab these a tags well let's see let's see let's see let's see so we got this a so here right we'll move this down and then we'll grab this li we'll move it up we'll move this one down and then we can get rid of that and we'll do the same thing over here then we got this li right here this li needs to be down there and we'll put a space in between here and let's try it let's do a um so here we got this ending a tag we don't need that we can get rid of this so control shift k to get rid of that one and now we'll delete this blank line and we will adjust our spacing so if we right click and go format document now our spacing lines up there and we just have to do that for the rest of these so i'm going to fix all of these now i've gone through and i've fixed all of that stuff and now when we scroll over these it just selects the text so we're good to go team but now we've got one last thing we have to do. We have to style our our social media icons. So when we hover over those, they turn white. So what we can do is go back to our main.css. We can go over to our social media icon nav dash ul and we'll go down. Well, actually we'll we'll select the whole thing. And then we'll hit shift and alt and hit down. And then we'll go back here. We'll put a space in between social media nav ul and then we'll go l i and a and then we'll put a hover and we will make the background white so we'll control shift k to delete that and to delete that then we'll control shift enter and we'll put background color white and we'll save and now we go back over here uh, it still doesn't work what's going on and the reason why it's not showing up is because we haven't added our social media we haven't made these links so we got to scroll down here what we're going to do is we're going to hit the windows key we're going to make visual studio code as big as possible so we don't make the same mistake that we made before team now inside of here we're going to wrap these well actually we need to look and see where exactly we put that styling to make these images I mean well to make that background so if we look through here and we find white content container color white color white let's see so we got background color social media now you are okay all right so we set this a tag to hover but let's see we have the, the gray background is set for image size so what we can do social media icon image size We'll go social media icon image size. All right, so we got social media icon image size hover. We'll save there and let's see. We'll windows to the left and let's see. Let's see. Social media icon image size. Hover. Oh, I see it is a class. So we we'll go back here at this is a class save and still nothing. What's going on here? Let's go grab this social media image size. Control C and let's paste this right here. Control V and save. And now when we hover over them, they turn white. I had something. I, I must have had it. It typed like really wrong. All right, so we save. Now we hover over these. We get this white background. And all we got to do is go over here. And inside of this, we will just add some A tags. So we'll just go. Um, we'll put. We'll put a cursor here. We'll put one here. And we'll put one here. And we'll hit enter. And then we'll put A tab. And we'll put a asterisk. 
and we'll go over and hit enter and then we'll grab these A's and we'll move the A's all the way down underneath these L I well actually let's go back and take a look at this a bit closer alright so we've got our A alright so we want to go below our images and we'll go back up and delete these lines K save and now these are going to act like they are links but as you can see when we hover over them we get this background so what we do now is we go back to our main.css and we find where we have this A and our A is set to white text decoration and then we have a somewhere alright so nav ul lia the background hover is red so we're gonna set this to just this up here so we will go back and we can say main nav so we'll go back over here and we'll say where is it at nav ul lia hover so we'll go instead of nav we'll go main nav main dash nav save oh we have to put a dollar sign not a dollar sign but a uh, a hashtag there all right and so now those are done and when we go down here when we hover over those those are just white because now they have a different style and we get the pointer because they're links so all we have to do is set up the links now so if we go back over here and we scroll down to our social media links this first one is going to go to facebook so we'll go to facebook h https semicolon forward slash forward slash www.facebook.com forward slash uh write code drink coffee i don't even know if that page exists or if it works all right and then for the instagram we're going to do the same thing so we're just going to copy this control c and we'll go down to social media icons and our second one is instagram and in our link we're just going to paste this here v and then instead of facebook we're going to put insta insta gram we'll save and then down here for what's this last one the last one is for the app store we're just going to link that over to the uh the code 365 startup lab so we'll just double we'll go and grab this right here and we're just going to go uh https semicolon forward slash forward slash www dot right of dot the code three six five startup lab dot com and we'll save that and now we can close this when we go click these links they are each going to go to their web pages spam and so we got this one here and we got this one here oh and that one doesn't oh there we go and so these other two, I'm going to set these to go to instead of Facebook.com. We're going to set them to go to uh, hmm. a real Casadero save. And we'll close this. We'll close that. We'll close this. We'll close that. And let's go local host 5500 save. All right, so let's see. We've got this set to go to Facebook, the real Casadero. We've got this set to go to Instagram, and here we'll go, the real Casadero. And then down here, all right, we'll leave that one the same. Save, and now let's go back Facebook. And all right, so this one finds me, and let's see, we'll go with this one, and this one finds me, and that is it, team. We have successfully built Deuce, the Supreme website. Well, what well we built, we built Superior. But we have successfully built this thing from scratch, team. It is done. We can take this, drag this up here and hit F11 for full screen. And that is how you do it, team. That is the process that you go through. And there's a bunch of other stuff we can do, a bunch of other stuff we can add. There's a bunch of things we can fix. Like say, for instance, this clock right here. This clock actually gets the correct time from 
either the user's, user's computer or a server somewhere. And so what we can do is we can use JavaScript to go in and program this clock. If you want to see how I use JavaScript to go in and program this clock so it actually gets the time, team, what you want to do is subscribe to the channel and or head over to the Code 365 Startup Lab where you can sign up and you can learn HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Now, I will tell you right now, I'm only on the HTML portion, but I do plan on releasing the JavaScript portion by the end of the year. So right now, lifetime membership at the Code 365 Startup Lab is set at 99 bucks. You can sign up and you can become a part of the Code 365 startup lab community for $99 and as new features are added as new things are built and placed on the site as new courses come and as I complete new content you're going to have access to all that stuff lifetime for $99 and if you're not sure that you want to fork over 99 bucks right up front then that's absolutely cool inside of the code 365 startup lab there is a month to month subscription so you can subscribe for 20 bucks and go in and you can check out all the content and if the next month you decide this isn't for you just cancel your subscription and you're off and on your way team but for $99, you can't beat that. Right now, we're going deep into HTML, CSS. So all the stuff you saw me doing off the top of my head here in this tutorial is all stuff that you can see that you will learn how to do in the Code365 Startup Lab. Now, it's not. this isn't just a course where you go in and you take it and then now you're instantaneously a genius. You're going to have to practice this stuff. You're going to have to build things. And inside of this course, after I get finished with the HTML portion, and it's all complete the the exercises for the html portion are going to be building actual websites so the exact same way that we went out and we built uh, a clone of this website here you're going to have to do that too and you can go off and you can do that stuff now you can start building now but if you want some sort of accountability with the future potential to be able to communicate and network and work with and build applications for fun and profit with other members of the code 365 startup lab team this is where you want to be all right team and also also if you want to support the channel if you want these free videos to keep coming just like this and you want more of them team and you want just more content to keep you inspired and motivated on your journey think about it think about subscribing to the code 365 startup lab because all of that money goes to support the channel and support new content and support me helping aspiring developers wrap their minds around the fact that you don't just have to learn the code to get a job you learn to code in order to build your own stuff for fun and profit team so that is it team it is me your biggest fan the real casadero i don't know you i've never met you but i know you have greatness within you team go off and build i look forward to seeing you in the next episode <laughs>